welcome back. Today's lecture is going to take a slightly uh, different format. And what I'm going to be doing is, this is going to be, there'll be at times uh, during uh, this course, where, you know, we have been, we might watch a video and then discuss it. We may go through an article. Um, these lectures take a, a variety of forms. It's maybe based on a video, it may be based around a theme, it may be based on an article that we are summarising through bullet points, but occasionally I'm going to be pausing and uh, getting away from uh, books and ideas and not talking necessarily about important anthropologists and sociologists in the past that we can learn from, but to be just telling you stories about some of the ways that I do research, some of the mistakes that I've made, that I've learned from, and which I really don't want you as a young researcher to have to experience. And um, today is actually a Friday, um, uh, and you don't know this, but immediately after finishing uh, today's uh, lot of recordings, I'm going to be going to uh, do some field work. And I'm going to be taking um, some of my gear along and I wanted to just show you what I use and uh, how I use these tools to um, collect this thing called data. And if you haven't watched the video on data, there will be uh, a video on data there um, my screen has just gone down. Let me just turn that on again. Okay, so um, what I want to do is uh, just tell you a little about um, how I, some of the tools and the skills that, that I, I have in the past and do now use when I do field work, which is the main way as an anthropologist that I uh, collect qualitative data. And um, I, I hope that you enjoy this little summary. If you, if you, um, if you remember when I introduced myself and my, my own career, I mentioned that for 10 years I lived in South Thailand and I stumbled into anthropology. And when I started to uh, do field work, um, when I started just being in, when I finished being just an ordinary um, expat living and working in Thailand, I began to research, I began to do more structured participant observation, I began to write field notes, when I began to record my casual conversations, when I began to interview people. I, a, a toolkit, and it was a very simple toolkit. Um, my toolkit now is a bit more complicated, and as I will explain later, it's complicated because I've changed my research methods to one which is um, more visual in its interests. And so, what uh, were the tools that I used when I did research in the past, and the most important tool that I used was this thing called a notebook. I have a couple of notebooks. I have, I have only two at a time, and one is a larger one which goes into my computer bag, and I have a smaller one that fits into my pocket. And so when I am out, um, uh, this was something I started years ago, but when I am out uh, and about, I will have a small notebook in my pocket, and sometimes when I'm out with my bag, or on a longer trip with a bag, I will have a larger pad. And on whenever I um, have a, a notebook, and whenever I make an observation, the first thing that I do is I write at the top right-hand corner of the a page, I write the date. I write the date and I write the place. And why is this important? 
because in years, uh, years and years and years uh, and years and years time, uh, we will look at our notebook and we'll think, where was I, what date was this, what was I doing? And so the notebook was the first and most important um, tool that I use. And this is an analog tool. This is not a digital tool, but um, a system that I got into um, very early on was that I took my um, notebook where I wrote, scrolled down phone numbers of people, observations, details of conversations, words that I heard that I didn't understand, and all of these were written on pages that were dated so that I knew where I was and what date it was. I would take these and I would scan them. And the I am a bit picky. Um, when you scan something, it is an A4 size. And so uh, the small notebook I can open up into two pages and I put it on the scanner. We scan them to an A4. This is just under an A4. I put it on and I scan. And once it is scanned and digitized, with Adobe Acrobat Pro, I can OCR this, and I can insert, I can type notes, and I can um, I can index uh, this as part of my, uh, we've talked about indexing software, and I'll continue to make comments about indexing software. Please remember that when I repeat something, it's not because... I'm disorganized, or I think you haven't been listening, but important points need to be said more than once. And one of the bumper stickers that I'm going to be talking about is the way that ethnographic research is almost 80% about writing. It's about turning observations, the things that we see and we hear, into paper into things that we type and we print out and we need to type things but we also need to index all that information so that we know uh, how to find it. And all of these, uh, the analog and the, the scan version of my, uh, my analog, my physical um, notebooks are used to write more formal uh, field notes on my computer because my handwriting is so awful. Some people write lovely field notes um, by hand, but I don't do that. And I'll be showing you a program that I use uh, to write my field notes. But this is arguably the most important point. Two points. The first, I scan my field notes. Why? Am I going to be traveling around with my field notes, or all the field notes that I've written? Am I going to be traveling around with um, lots and lots of big and small um, notebooks? Um, if I uh, want to know the name of the person that I met, the name and phone number of the person that I met at a specific a particular place at a particular time, am I going to be able to um, carry all of my physical notebooks around if I'm traveling through the country? No. What I do is I um, look up the scanned version of my field notes. And so um, uh, filing um, is very, very important. Um, I mentioned this earlier, filing is a laborious boring, uninteresting um, task, but I think it is a very important skill and discipline for ethnographers to have. And so this is the template of what I use in all of my filing. I start, I have a, um, I have a system where at the, every, every piece of data that I collect starts with a what? What is it? It's a field note. It is a field work note. F W K field work. And it's a note. So it has a what, it has a when, year, date, month, time. And I, I like to put, you'll notice that I've got 
2018, 8 August 16. Now, I do that because um, if I use the system, all of my field notes, all of my files will be done automatically in the file manager. If I have August, August is the 8th month, um, if I file it without an 8 in front of August, then August will be ahead of January. So January is 2018, 1 Jan. Do you get it? January is the first month, so I have 1 Jan, and it may be the 16th of January. And then it has some information, and so I've just put TU because I'm in Tamasat University. Okay, the other piece of equipment that I used in my first 10, ten years, uh, before I got very interested and engaged in visual anthropology, and I did a series of lectures on visual anthropology. The other piece of equipment I had is a voice recorder, and I prefer to buy small, simple ones that are particularly expensive, that run off uh, just normal AAA batteries. Uh, this, uh, the brand of this one is a Zoom. It has a very good um, um, multi-directional mic that catch, captures everything in the room. And I put a little clip on here so that I can, um, I can put this onto a hot shoe and go onto the top of a camera or a video camera or a monopod. And so... Uh, the microphones, um, let's just make some comments about microphones. The first thing that you must do when you're using any electronic equipment is to make sure that you set the correct day and time. And the reason for this is that um, this will be marked in the metadata when you are filing, when you are storing things, um, the computer will be told that this uh, file was created on a specific date. Remember to make sure that you not only ch uh, set the settings for the date and the time, but also that you choose the right file settings. You may need to talk to a technician. There may be someone in the department who is a media specialist or you may have a friend who is an audio engineer or a photographer or a videographer. What file formats do you use? So mostly, the most important two that you need to know, there are many others, is a WAV format, and you can have different settings. They are big files. They're huge files. And they are usually used when you are performing, when you are recording performances, uh, music and you are using recordings that will be used in video. You can have a bad picture quality video, but if you have a, a strong audio, you'll be fine. Um, use MP3 formats, which is a compressed version, um, and uh, you use these mainly uh, for interviews. Um, there is nothing more difficult than trying to transcribe an interview when you can't hear what the person is saying. It is very difficult, especially if it's in another language. And so how do I, how did I, and how do I um, file these? Again, um, I, I start with a what, it's a fieldwork mp3, and I have the year, the month, the date, the time, and some other information. So the what, the, the date, and the time, and some more information. So, but I've changed, uh, I've changed how I work um, uh, in the, the recent years, and I still use notebooks, I still use microphones, and I don't need to repeat um, what I do there. Uh, but one of the things that I use now is I uh, use a video camera, and this is, this is one of the video cameras that I use. Um, it's a very, um, it's a very uh, inexpensive video camera. Um, it's a, actually just a little action cam. And um, because of the importance of audio, um, you probably can't see this very well, because of the importance of audio, I have a very good microphone 
on this small video. Now I can use this video on my expensive still camera. Um, I can use it in all sorts of ways. Uh, so I have this video camera. Now, um, if you are wanting to use video, uh, if you're wanting to take video, it's a really good idea for you to have a tripod or a monopod. I would recommend that you actually work with a monopod, not a tripod. A monopod takes up less room. It's easier for you to put up. Uh, you don't have to take as much space. I often, um, I often um, take videos um, in, in very, very small houses and I often have to put everything in a corner on a big, big, tall monopod where um, I get um, uh, a, a nice video of the context where rituals are happening. The microphone is going to, this is a torpedo mic, it's going to capture the sound really nicely. If it's on a monopod, uh, it's going to be still. And there's nothing wrong if you use the right settings to be moving around and, and moving around into action and recording things. But for me personally, I often use the videos as a way of getting context. Once again, we need to make sure that we use the right uh, file settings. Um, make sure that you've decided um, what uh, are you going to use uh, HD, full HD, 4K. Those are usually used when you are aiming for a production. You're wanting to produce this um, uh, video. This is different from the MP4 format. And most cameras will allow you to record in two formats at the same time. So the MP4 is like an MP3. Uh, the MP3 is a smaller version of the WAV file, and the MP4 is a smaller version of this huge, big um, video file, which has very high quality uh, audio as well. And this is usually, for me anyway, usually used as a content analysis, uh, and we'll be talking about that. The filing, I hope that this is stated in the obvious now. What when, what, when, and what, okay? So it's a field work video, the date, and the date, the time, and the place. The what, the when, and again, the what. Because, um, because the what, the information, uh, is right at the end, this is often something that I expand on. But the... Fieldwork video 2018, 8 August 16, 11 a.m. Tamasa University. That doesn't change, but at the end of that, I could be putting more information about the things that I was videoing. And I put it into my um, Finder, if you Mac or Windows Explorer, and I can choose by file name and I can see all of the things in sequence. Okay, still cameras. I've got a number of still cameras, and uh, this is uh, one which I am wonder if I could put it in front of here. You probably can't see it. So this is another still camera. It's not big. It's tiny, very powerful. It takes 4K video. Um, and so, again, make sure that we are choosing the right file settings. Make sure that we have, for the video camera, we've got the date, and the time set properly. Uh, the same for the still camera. Let's make sure that the, the date and the time is all set properly and choose the file settings that we want. My suggestion is that you set it to do, for this to do high, um, high quality video as well as um, MP4. And for this, to use a raw file as well as an MP, um, as well as a JPEG. And so, again, the raw file is used when you eventually do a production, when you are wanting to use it as your end product. But uh, a JPEG is a smaller version, which is often used for content. Um, remember that um, sometimes, in some places, you need to use a, a, a tripod 
photography at night. Um, uh, usually you are using longer exposures and if you don't use a tripod or a monopod, it's going to be blurred and filing. This is my system, fieldwork pick. And we're using the what, the when, and more information. Now, I am not a very good mobile phone user, but obviously, I'm assuming that you are far better than me. And the technology on mobile phones is amazing, and because you are probably younger than me, you may not have any of this equipment, a video camera, a still camera, a microphone. You may have just one piece of equipment, and this is a mobile phone. I suggest that you consider uh, buying a cheap monopod most video cameras can be clipped on to a monopod and you can take you can take a microphone and with an adapter that will go from this type of uh, 3.5 mil output into a different jack you can get an adapter and you can have a very high quality microphone um, onto your mobile phone. Your mobile phone should be, um, it can be used as a still camera. I can use this to increase the ease with which I can take good photos. It can be used as a video to be moving around, as well as to be placed um, perhaps on a monopod which is higher to get the general context. Okay, so all of these things uh, can be done with one piece of equipment and um, I'm sorry, I am not very good at using my mobile phone. I uh, started too old. It can do stills, it can do videos, it can do audio, you can record, download apps that will take high quality audio files as well as just ordinary mp3s and it can be used to take notes as well okay so um, we also have to remember that if you are doing field work you need to be able to um, store enough whether they be mini SD cards or normal SD cards make sure that you have enough of them Format it before you go on, and when uh, at the end of the day, what one needs to do <laughs> is one needs to transfer everything from your computer, uh, from your, your your microphone, your camera, your video camera, or your mobile phone, onto an external hard drive. Get them off the SD card off your devices or device immediately. Get them off there and I will show you uh, in the next video uh, some little tricks about how you can um, batch rename uh, many, um, you can batch rename all of your files by uh, using advanced functions. So you change, you get everything off the SD card onto here, and you change all of the file names. And uh, this is a best practice uh, if you are using uh, this particular toolkit. So get it off your SD cards, you can either put it onto your computer hard drive, or um, you can put it onto an external hard drive. You can use an external hard drive or your computer's hard drive. And as soon as possible, have your information in at least two places. Your computer's hard drive, your external hard drive. And then um, you can put these SD cards back into your devices. My suggestion is that you reformat your cards every time you do that that means you are less likely to have
computer problems. Okay, so um, in our, we're going to be doing some more videos um, in the future, um, which are based on, uh, which are based on um, some personal stories and perspectives. And so, probably when I'm away uh, this weekend doing some field work, I'll be taking some video and some stills of some of the things that um, I've been doing while I'm away. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video, and remember to keep watching. See you again.